Not only is Tracy Edmonds known for her television and film projects like Soul Food and Games People Play, but she's also made headlines for her relationships with high-profile celebrities. She's been involved with Pro Football Hall of Famer Deion Sanders for what seems like four ever. And as the years pass by, we continue to wonder what's holding them back from tying the knot. After doing some in-depth research, we've concluded that Tracy is smart, beautiful, and a bit clueless when it comes to noticing the red flags in her relationships. My mom thinks I'm giving more to this relationship than Dion is. Now you know this is about to be some mess, so be sure to scoop up something to munch on at rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand that has an assortment of beef and bacon jerky, banana pudding popcorn, and butter toffee peanuts. You know we love us a good backstory, and this video wouldn't be complete without giving you a brief recap of Tracy's dating history, so let's jump into it. After her marriage to Babyface ended in 2005 with Babyface admitting they were never really in love with each other, Tracy confirmed to People magazine in December 2006 that she was dating Eddie Murphy. At the time, Eddie had just loved bombed and dumped his pregnant girlfriend Mel B. And you can check out all the messy details about that relationship in our Eddie and Mel B video that we've linked for you in the description box. A source told People magazine that Eddie was laying it on thick during their courtship. He reportedly sent her giant bouquets every single day and showered her with expensive jewelry. Tracy's divorce from Babyface was finalized in June 2007, and a few months later, Eddie proposed with an eight-carat diamond engagement ring. During an interview with Oprah Winfrey, Babyface stated he didn't know Eddie at all, but he thought his ex-wife was making a huge mistake. He didn't elaborate any further, and Tracy wasn't trying to hear anything he was talking about anyway. Tracy, Eddie, and 25 of their closest family members and friends jetted off to Bora Bora, and on January 1st, 2008, Tracy and Eddie tied the knot and honeymooned on the island. While Eddie told People magazine he was the happiest that he had ever been, things were unraveling behind the scenes. Their ceremony wasn't recognized in the U.S., so they weren't legally bound to each other. Sources also reported Eddie grew standoffish immediately after the multi-day event, and guests told People magazine they could hear the couple arguing and Tracy was heard crying during their honeymoon. Additional news reports claimed Tracy was bumping heads with Eddie's mother, and the couple argued over Tracy's refusal to take Eddie's last name. Tracy was also concerned with the number of people that were in and out of Eddie's Los Angeles home, including Eddie's close friend, Johnny Gill. Tracy reportedly referred to Eddie's house as a family reunion home because of all the people that were living there. Tracy allegedly gave Eddie an ultimatum by telling him she wanted everyone to move out before she moved in. Instead of making her happy, Eddie kicked her to the curb. Their relationship ended two weeks after their ceremony. That same year, there were rumors that she had moved on with 50 Cent. Her next serious relationship didn't take place until years later. Meanwhile, Dion had just filed for divorce from his wife of 12 years, Pilar. After a lengthy court battle, Dion was awarded full custody of their three children, and Pilar complained that the court sided with Dion because he was famous and powerful and because he had more money. I understand that I have very little chance at beating a Hall of Fame to sport man that everyone seems to love and adore. I'm a, a full-time mom, 100% for my children. Sometime toward the end of 2011, Dion attended a party to celebrate the premiere of Tracy's movie, Jumping the Broom. Though they only briefly chatted, Dion told People Magazine he was immediately smitten. Before the night was over, he sent a friend over to get Tracy's business card for him. Months later, he contacted Tracy to pitch an idea for a TV show. In early 2012, he flew out to Los Angeles, and they had breakfast together. Tracy told Ebony Magazine they decided to work together on a reality show centered around his family, and things between them turned romantic. 
Initially, they kept their relationship on the down low, since Dion was still legally married at the time. In April 2012, they were spotted looking cozy in New York at the opening of Streetcar Named Desire. According to Dion, news traveled back to Pilar that he was spending time with Tracy, and when he made it back to Texas, he claimed Pilar and her friend jumped him in front of their children. Dion wasted no time contacting the authorities. His divorce was finalized in June 2013, and his reality show, Dion's Family Playbook, premiered on the Oprah Winfrey Network in March 2014. By this point, Dion and Tracy had gone public with their relationship, and Tracy made a few appearances on the show as well. During one episode, Tracy's mom expressed her concerns over Tracy and Dion's unequal partnership. With Tracy living in Beverly Hills and Dion based in Dallas, Tracy would often fly to Texas every other week to spend time with her new boo. And Tracy's mom wondered why Dion didn't try to fly out to California sometimes. Dion needs to bring his ass there sometime. And then you come and you guys need to alternate because you need to be there more. Tracy brushed it off and was adamant she didn't mind the long flights to spend time with her man. But the drama between Dion and his ex-wife continued to put a damper on things. Dion filed a defamation suit against Pilar after she posted multiple social media posts and videos referencing Dion putting his hands on her and an allegation that Dion had attempted to take her life. In 2014, Dion had Pilar locked up for seven days for violating her visitation agreement. He also testified that he believed it was in his children's best interests that they not be allowed to see their mother. In his own words, he stated, She brainwashes them, as well as teaching them things that's unlawful, ungodly, absurd, and turning them against me. Now, we think that most people would run for the hills by this point because who really wants to be in a relationship with someone that is constantly knee-deep in some mess with their ex? But as you already know, Tracy continued with their bi-coastal romance, and Dion would later give her props for holding him down through all the drama. Seven years after they first met, Dion decided it was time to pop the question, and they became fiancés in 2019. On the day they announced their engagement, Dion took to his Instagram to pin a special message for Tracy. In his post, he wrote, You're a real woman, baby. A grown woman. The first time I saw you, I knew you were it. If I could sing like Babyface, I would start singing right now. So, if he knew she was the one when they first met, why did it take him seven years to propose? And did he really have to mention her ex-husband in the post? Kinda strange if you ask us. So what took him so long? Well, he told the Journeys of Faith with Paula Ferris podcast that since their kids were much older, he thought it was time to bridge the gap in their long-distance romance. As for wedding plans, he said he wanted it to be only him, Tracy, and their pastor somewhere out in the country. He added, And we go fishing right afterward. She wouldn't like that, but I would love it. In 2019, Tracy and Dion finished building what she described as her dream house, located in the city of Canton, which is about an hour outside of Dallas. Baby, we're going to show them you ain't bougie. Take your time, baby. Do your thing, baby. Do your thing. You can do this, baby. Uh-uh, you ain't got to do nothing, baby. Just go. Just go. Let, let the Lord use you. There you go, baby. Go, baby. She told Tinseltown Mom website, we have 200 lakefront acres out there in a ranch farm style setting with chickens, hogs, and fishing lakes. She also admitted that during the football season, she spent four days a week in Los Angeles and the remaining three days were spent in Texas with Dion, where he was coaching high school football. And during the off season, Dion, quote, reverses things and spends more time in LA. Tracy said they planned on keeping that schedule for the next few years until they were ready to retire. As for their upcoming nuptials, Tracy went along with Dion's idea of having the ceremony in the country by agreeing to tie the knot on their new property in Texas. As for the actual wedding date, Tracy said they hadn't decided because they both needed to slow down a bit and find time to plan things out. In 2019, Tracy settled down in Atlanta to be closer to the set of her BET show, Games People Play. And in 2020, Dion was announced as the new head coach of the Jackson State Tigers. He packed up and moved to Mississippi to be closer to his new job. And he and Tracy worked out a new schedule so they could spend time together. 
they still insist that being apart doesn't bother them. They also admitted that they're at an age where they don't require a lot from each other. Dion told People Magazine they don't need to talk on the phone 10 to 15 times a day. And they both understand that the other one is busy. And they respect that about each other. They got rid of their schedule to see each other on predetermined days. Tracy said instead, they just do their best to see each other whenever they have time. In November 2021, Dion underwent surgery to correct a foot issue. During his recovery process, he took a moment to shout out Tracy, who he described as his ride or die. But as for calling her his wife, it appears that Dion and Tracy are still taking their sweet old time and are in no rush to head to the altar. If you're a fan of our red flag videos, you probably already know how this story will end. But nonetheless, we wish Dion and Tracy nothing but the best. Are we on point with these red flags or are we tripping? <laughs> Let us know down below. And thanks for watching RRG.